Hey guys, what's up? My name is Noah, and I'm bringing you a biology video for the upcoming quiz. And uh, if you're anything, if you're anything like me, uh, you probably spend a little bit too much partying at the dance and not enough time studying beforehand, and you kind of pushed it back to Sunday. But uh, I'm here to hopefully help you guys understand some of the biology. Now, what we're going to be going over in this video is um, Shog's disease, and basically the reproduction of Shog's disease and um, how you get infected and the processes within. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. Now um, within this whole thing there's going to be two key terms that we're going to need to understand. Um, those being what a tripomastigote is and what a amastigote is. Now um, basically what a uh, tripomastigote is is it's it's basically a, uh, a parasitic protozoan in the blood, right? And that would make sense because Shog's disease, what it does is it uh, goes through and it infects blood, right? All right, so a tripomastigote has a flagellum, and that's a very important and uh, key part of this, is it, it has a flagellum. Now, if you look at the first step in our handout, it says that the parasite reproduces asexually, so that basically means that um, it's not sexual reproduction, it's like binary fusion. In the vector's gut, uh, metacyclic tripomastigotes move to the anus of the vector. What does that mean? Well, it means that metacyclic is the infective stage. So it's basically saying that uh, the type of tripomastigote that's going to infect one uh, moves to the vector's butt. Um, a tripomastigote is again, it's um, it's a protozoan, um, it's an infectious protozoan that basically lives in the blood. All right, so now what is a mastigote? Well, an a mastigote is similar to a trimastigote, except it is uh, it's non-flagellate, which basically means it doesn't have a flagellum, right? It's intracellular, uh, morphologic and um, basically it's this without a tail. Um, that's kind of the important thing to understand about it. So basically what happens is uh, the vector uh, infects someone, right, so it uh, I guess it bites them and then it defecates onto the skin and then and Mrs. Ligon elaborated about how they slap it and transfer it to the eye or they rub it into the bug's bite. Now this trimast goat um, goes into the cells and reproduces as amastigotes. So what you're going to have is this thing go into a cell like this and reproduce amastigotes and um, it's going to release them. And in that process this cell is going to die. Um, so some of the new ones will infect other cells and others will turn back into the trimastigotes and kind of live in the bloodstream. Um, it's called going dormant, right? So it's going to kind of float in the bloodstream, and um, sometimes if you go under stress or something, I guess these will turn back in to a mast goats. I don't know that for sure, but um, it's basically going to go dormant with some of them, and some of the other ones will insect infect cells. So if we come down here. Uh, this is from the CDC website, and it looks um, pretty terrible, but it's not. Um, Following from here, what's going to happen is the vector is going to come into someone who's infected and it's going to take a blood meal. What does that mean? Well, when a mosquito bites you, it sucks your blood, and that's what a blood meal is, is your blood as its meal. <laughs> so it's going to go into the um, amastigote's midgut, and it's going to multiply, and then it's going to go basically to its anus. And that's pretty much uh, the whole cycle. Then it's going to infect you. Um, that's the first stage. And then it's going to come over here and it's going to uh, penetrate various cells, right? So it's going to infect the cells and it's going to transform into these amastigotes. Remember, that's um, a trimastigote without a tail, without a flagellum. So now it's going to go over here. The amastigotes multiply um, using binary fission, all right? Remember that these are uh, asexual and they're going to reproduce. Then the cells going to lice, they're going to get released. Some of them are going to transform back into trimastigotes, and uh, some of them are going to stay as amastigotes, 
and infect other cells. Then this uh, vector is going to take up another blood meal. So this is a different vector taking a different blood meal. Now this vector is carrying Shog's disease and it can go on to infect another individual. So I hope that uh, I hope that helped clear some things up for you guys. Um, I was certainly confused until I did quite a bit of research about it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know on Facebook, send me a message, leave a comment on the video. Um, just try and get in contact with me and I'll uh, see what I can do to help. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this last minute video guys and uh, thanks for watching.